And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Gutenberg. Now, spoiler alert, if you watched my top 10 games of 2021, Gutenberg was on the list, so you already know I like it. I was hoping I would like it. When I first saw the game and saw that it used little tiles or you know like little typeset pieces and the theme of it itself I mean Gutenberg is has changed history more than almost any other man alive you know inventing the printing press is a big deal I really like that concept I like the idea of it and I enjoy the gameplay itself so let's take a look at how the game works and we'll be back In this game, each player is going to have their own player board. You're going to get your own character, so maybe you'll start with Mr. Gutenberg himself, which gives you a special ability. As the game goes by, you're going to get different gears that you're going to stick on your board. And at the beginning of every turn, these gears will, will rotate one. And each of them has a special ability that you can use once per round, and it's always the one that's facing this kind of white mark here, and you just put a cube on it of your color to show that you've used it. And so that's kind of improving your printing process. And over here you have specialties, uh, typesetting, woodcutting, binding, and illuminating. As the game goes by, you're gonna be able to move these up. And when one of them hits level two, this moves over and gives you a benefit. And as you get one of them up to certain points, you'll get this benefit. And the higher these are, you'll get extra points at the end of the game. Each round, players are gonna be secretly taking black cubes and putting them on the different actions that you wanna take. If you wanna take an action, you'll have to put at least one black cube there. But if multiple people do it, whoever puts the most there gets to do it first. If there's a tie, then whoever goes first in turn order will break that tie. However, that person has fewer cubes. At the end of every round, everybody gives one black cube to the person who was first, and they will be last next turn. And so once everyone's done this and you'll do it behind a shield, you'll reveal them and go through them one at a time. The first one is take orders. You're gonna pick one card from over here and one card from over here, and that will become a new order that you will have and you'll put next to your board. You can have up to four orders. Players will be drafting two orders at the beginning of the game. For an order to work, you need tile letter tiles of that type. So this one, I need an I and an O. And you optionally will need colors and to have certain levels um, of those different technologies. If you have those, you'll get be other benefits. And if you have both of them, you'll get a third benefit. But this is an order. The second thing that players are trying to get are you know, the paint pigments here. When you do that, you pick a group. You get the first one for free. You can buy the second one for a coin and the third one for two coins. Again, going in turn order, whoever put out the most black cubes. This is how you increase your technologies. You can take one of these cards and increase your technologies by both sides. So here I would increase the binding twice. If I took this one, I would increase binding once and illuminating once. Or you can ignore what's on the card and increase any one of your skills once. Down here, you either get a gear and put it on your board, and there will be four gears available here at the beginning of each round. When you take one, it's not immediately refilled, so going first can matter. And you'll put it on your board, or you can take one that's on your board and move and rotate it to a better position. Players, the final thing that players will do is the patronage thing, and that you can do depending on what round it is. There are six rounds in the game. So in the first round, you can only go to these spots and maybe take a new order, increase one of your techs, take three money, or take two pigments of your choice. But as time goes by, you can get a patron. Here you would need to spend two yellow pigments and have two letter U's. Here you need to have a level four in typography and have two I tiles. Once you do that, you'll get that card, and at the end of the game, these cards are going to be worth eight points. Players will start with two letters, and you'll be able to buy more letters. They just cost one coin for each letter you already have. And that's because after everyone has done all six actions, you can fulfill as many of your orders as you possibly can. Each of your letters can only be assigned to one job, but you don't lose the letter. It's just printing that letter. You know, the I prints it right on top of there. The pigments you need to spend to get some extra bonus. So this would give me, for example, two money for doing this order. But if I spend a blue and a green pigment, I get four points. 
if I'm at level four in pigments and level three here, I also get an additional five money. And if I do both of these, I can go up a track of my choice in the technology. So having big orders can get you a lot of money and or a lot of points. And players can fulfill as many orders as they have, but you're gonna need a lot of letters to do so. Once that's done, you start the next round. At the end of the game, players are going to uh, turn any extra money that they have into points. You get eight points for each patron you have, and whoever's progressed the farthest on this track is the winner. If you watch my reviews, you'll notice that I usually complain that boards are brown, and this is one of those times where it makes sense. I really like the aesthetics of this board. I love the point track on the outside, how it looks like typeset here. And I mean, these tokens are ridiculous, but they're fantastic. I really like these. I like the gears. Um, you have to like build these ahead of time. You're just basically pounding these tokens in here, but the gears work on that. I like the coins. I like the cards. There's one thing I'm not a happy with, with component-wise, and that is that the money and the point symbols, because they're not colored or anything, they look similar at a glance. Sometimes you'll forget. Sometimes you'll think this is money, and you might think that's points. Now, you're looking at them right next to each other and thinking, oh, they're pretty easy to tell apart. That's sort of true, but I'm telling you, in every game of this I played, people have messed them up. I thought maybe about getting a highlighter and just filling in the money ones although that might make the game look a little worse. We'll have to see. But other than that, really happy with the components, really like the look of this game, and I thought the rule book very easy to understand. I should also mention that the game comes with a bunch of tuck boxes in which you can keep everything, and some people are going to love these tuck boxes, and I don't really care for tuck boxes that much, so I won't keep them. I'm kind of neutral on this, but you have tuck boxes to keep stuff in for the game. Yeah, like I said, Gutenberg is just very enjoyable. So at its heart, it's an auction game, although it doesn't necessarily feel like an auction game. And one of the things about that is when you get the black cubes, you can put one in every spot. You get an action. The other people can't take, you know, everything. Uh, there's fewer things based on the number of players. I showed you a four-player setup, but there would be fewer for three or two. But you might get the better thing, but at least I'll get something. And I like that part of the game. But that, that system works so well. Whoever's first has six cubes and seven, eight, nine. I got nine cubes. I got three more than you, but you win ties. And that's just, it's a brilliant concept, and it flows very easily because at the end of the turn, everyone just hands a black cube to the person who went first, and they're, they're all distributed evenly again. Just beautiful. I love that. I love the idea of it. The game itself is very simple. You're moving up tracks. You're trying to collect stuff. You can buy a tile at any time, a letter tile, but you have to decide. Money gets real tight as the game goes by, um, and you have to decide how many of those tiles you want to buy. Getting the the little the color tokens. Do you want to just shoot orders out the door at the beginning, or do you want to try to completely fill them? How far up on the tracks do you want to move? And will you use these wheels to your best advantage? So I didn't show you what the wheels do, but like many of the wheels, this one, for example, has a blank side. So one third of the time it doesn't do anything. But then it also lets you buy the letter I for three less money. That's a big deal. And then if you use the letter I in an order, it gives you an extra two points. That's an even bigger deal. It's a nice combo but maybe I'll use it at the beginning and not need it and switch it out. So there's some nice thoughts here. The special abilities, Johann Gutenberg, which I showed you, after everyone reveals, he can move one black cube from one spot to another, that's cool. There's one person who starts with one of these cogs on their board already, giving him a slight advantage. You know, they're very, they're not overly major special powers, but it's a little bit minor thing that I like. This is definitely a mid-weight game. It's not very heavy, it's easy to teach, it's easy to play. And I'm sure there's, you know, you could, it's possible maybe that you just get orders and you don't fulfill them and someone else beats you to a patron that you were building up towards. I get that there's going to be, a, some people have complained to me about a few small things like that. And I don't care, I just have so much fun playing the game. It's so interesting to me to try to outthink everyone else at the table. Again, it's an auction, but it's more of a kind of a who's going to put their things where. Because it's not like you lose every auction. You probably won't. 
and then you'll be able to win the next one and get these things and turn them in. But once that auction's over, it's all about picking things, moving up tracks in a very simple way where I think the theme helps. The theme does work with this game. This is a lot of fun, Gutenberg. They just announced in the news that Nor um, that's, it's being brought, I'm sorry, Portal. Portal's bringing this game to the US. Um, so when it comes, you have a chance to get it. I really enjoy this game. Uh, like I said, one of my favorite games from last year is a lot of fun, and every time I play it, I find that, again, it's an easy game to teach, it's fun, everyone's involved the entire game, there's very little downtime. Check it out, Gutenberg, I'm Tom Vassell, you've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!